Welcome to The Past People, where I will talk about the people of the past. Carolina Vansbeck was born into an affluent family on the 1st of March 1683. Her father, John Frederick, was the ruler of a small state in Germany, but he died when she was only three years old from smallpox that he contracted from one of his mistresses. Her mother moved her back to her hometown, but things did not work out and her mother was forced into marrying the Elector of Saxony against her will. She died shortly afterwards. Used to moving around, she decided to stay with a family friend who could go on to become the King of Prussia, Frederick, Elector of Brandenburg, and his wife, Sophia Charlotte. She was highly educated and made a desirable bride. She was married to George Augustus, who was the third in line to the throne of Britain. The pair moved to Britain in 1714 and her husband was made the Prince of Wales. Caroline would become Queen when George became King in 1727. Queen Caroline was the consort of George II and he reigned from 1727 to 1760 and due to the Queen's death he did so mostly without his wife. She was a Queen loved for her intelligence and strength and she attracted many scholars to the British court. He trusted her wholeheartedly with the country and made her regent whenever he had to leave. This was against tradition, whereby the son would take the reins, but as he was rebellious, this was not the case. Caroline became ill, and with medicine rarely being advanced enough to treat unexpected complications that occur, there was little hope. Queen Caroline's gut burst open and killed her in 1737. Caroline was not the slimmest of queens, so she suffered with gout in her feet, leaving her struggling to move around as she wished. She then suffered an umbilical hernia after the birth of her last daughter, Louise, the future queen of Denmark and Norway. After giving birth to eight children, her stomach muscles may have been weakened, causing the hernia and her widening waistline meant that her ladies would not have seen her ailment as she refused to undress in front of anybody. Caroline was in intense agony and during a reception on the 9th of November 1737 her problems came to light when she could no longer complete her duty during the engagement and was instead retired to bed desperately ill. As the Queen of England she had the best medical teams available at the time but even their expertise did not extend to this kind of complex ailment. They did put forward a gory treatment plan they tried bloodletting, the process of draining blood from the body, in the hope that it would cure her. When this did not work, they purged her. None of this worked, so they resulted in the drastic and risky option of operating on her. There was no anaesthetic available at the time, so you can imagine the pain that she would have been in during this. The doctors sliced open her abdomen and proceeded to cut the part of the bowel that was decaying and poking through the muscle wall despite it being advised to push the bowel back in and sew it up. This was repeated daily for a while, and by cutting her bowel, it removed all hope of her ever recovering. She would never be able to eat or drink again, despite being offered brandy and mint water, due to the doctors mutilating her digestive system. Not surprisingly, her health did not improve. Not only was she prone to infection due to poor hygiene at the time, she was still in agonising pain despite being given opium for the surgery. However, she did remain in good spirits throughout, still able to laugh with the surgeons. It is alleged that one of her surgeons set his wig on fire on a candle and that she had to stop the operation to laugh. The relationship with her son, the Prince of Wales, was fraught and they had not been in contact for a while. So when he requested to see his mother on her deathbed, George II refused him permission, of which the Queen agreed. Only two weeks later, the Queen's bowel burst, leaving her in agony and with wavering strength for three days before her death. She passed away 11 days after the evening engagement on the 20th November at St James's Palace. She spent the last of her hours saying goodbye to her children and her husband. She was buried in Westminster Abbey on the 17th of December and George II had Handel a composer make a piece of music for her funeral. 
The Ways of Zion Du Morn was composed and played as a funeral anthem on the day. The king was mourning and struggling and so did not attend as chief mourner. Instead, he attended a service at St James's Palace on special built seats made for nobles to see the procession in private. George requested that when he died that he would be buried with his wife. He had a coffin designed to remove the sides so that they could lay together again when he passed.